السلام علیکم کمپنیز ایکوائر ادر بزنسز ٹو ایکوائر ایسٹس ایکسپینڈ کسٹمر بیس اور ڈائیورسیفائی پروڈکٹس اور سروسز دی ایکوائرنگ کمپنی ڈیفائنس دا پرچیز پرائز آن دا بیسز آف دا فیئر ویلیو آف ایسٹس اینڈ لائبلٹیز آف دی ایکوائرڈ بزنس ان دس ویڈیو وی ول ڈسکس دی اکاؤنٹنگ پریکٹسز that are followed in stock acquisitions that is when one company controls the activities of another company through the direct or indirect ownership of some or all of its voting stock the acquiring company is referred as parent and the acquired company is subsidiary and those holding the remaining stock in a subsidiary are called non-controlling minority interest. A joint relationship is called affiliation and the related companies are called affiliated companies. The affiliated companies continue to have a separate legal existence and the acquiring company carries its interest as an investment. The affiliated companies prepare their own financial statements while the parent company records the investment in a single account called investment in subsidiary that is eliminated when the consolidated financial statements are prepared. The parent company can acquire more than one subsidiary forming a conglomerate and obtain controlling interest in them. In this video, We will explain the concept of control as used in reference to consolidations. We will explain the role of a non-controlling interest in business combinations. We will describe the reasons why a company acquires a subsidiary rather than its net assets. We will also describe the valuation and classification of accounts in consolidated financial statements. And finally, we will list the requirements for inclusion of a subsidiary in consolidated financial statements. But in the beginning of this session, I would like to thank my son Muhammad Abdullah Khan who gifted me an iPad along with all the necessary accessories without which making these videos would not have been possible. I would like to thank Nabiha Khan for helping me out in preparing these awesome slides. I would like to thank my wife Samina for her care, encouragement and constant support who allowed me to use the time for her in making this video. Let us start with the meaning of subsidiary and control. International Standard Board and Financial Accounting Standard Board have stated that the definition of control should not be limited to the common presumption of a 50% cutoff but should include an indirect ability to control another entity's assets. Controlling interest is defined as the portion of the equity of the consolidated group attributable to the parent and the parent's owners. In this video, we will focus on situations where the control is evidenced by a majority ownership. The same procedures would apply in a smaller percentage ownership with evidence of effective control. For example, the parent owns 40% of the voting stock and no other party has a significant interest or the parent controls the board. The Securities and Exchange Commission defines a subsidiary as an affiliate controlled by another entity directly or indirectly through one or more intermediaries. The first step 
in determining whether the financial statement should be consolidated is to determine if the reporting entity has a variable interest in another entity referred to as a potential variable interest entity called VIE. Since the parent company absorbs portion of expected losses or returns in the subsidiary, it is called variable interest. Some of the examples of variable interest in variable interest entities are like equity investment or investment in subordinated debt in a VIE are variable interest to the extent that they are at risk. Guarantees of the values of the assets or liabilities of the variable interest entity are variable interest. Let us now talk about the purpose of consolidated financial statements. The purpose of consolidated financial statements is to prepare the operating results and the financial position of a parent and all its subsidiaries as if they are one economic entity. According to FASB, all controlled corpor corporations should be consolidated. They have stated that parent company cannot distribute only its financial statements, rather they must distribute the consolidated financial statements. The only parent company financial statements may be needed for creditors and preferred shareholders of the parent. Consolidating statements with columns for different subsidiaries or groups of subsidiaries and one column for the parent are one effective way to present such information. Under some circumstances, majority owned subsidiaries should be excluded from the consolidated statements. Those circumstances include control does not rest with the majority owner. For example, a subsidiary in legal reorganization or bankruptcy should not be consolidated. The subsidiary operates under governmentally imposed uncertainty so severe as to raise significant doubt about the parent's control. For example, a foreign subsidiary is domiciled in a country with foreign exchange restrictions, controls or other governmentally imposed uncertainties so severe that they cast significant doubt on the parent's ability to control the subsidiary. Let us now talk about advantages to acquire a controlling interest in another company. There are many advantages to acquire a controlling interest in the voting stock of another company. For example, stock acquisition is relatively simple as it can be acquired by open market purchases. Subsidiary operations can be controlled with a smaller investment. It provides an element of protection as there is a separate legal existence of parent and subsidiary companies. Let us now talk about consolidated financial statements. Financial statements prepared for a parent company and its subsidiaries are called consolidated financial statements. They include statements normally prepared for a separate entity and the sum of the assets, liabilities, revenues and expenses of the affiliates after eliminating the effect of any transaction among the affiliated companies. When the parent company acquires a controlling interest in their subsidiary and the parent makes an entry debiting investment in subsidiary and crediting either cash, debt or stock or some combination depending upon the medium of exchange. 
Investment in stock by the parent company is recorded at cost under the acquisition method. The parent company can pay cash, other assets, debt, securities or a stock or a combination of these to acquire the business. Both the direct cost of acquiring the stock and the indirect cost relating to acquisitions such as the cost of maintaining an acquisition department should be expensed. If cash is used for the acquisition, the investment is recorded at its cash cost excluding broker's fees and other direct cost of the investment. Let us look into some transactions related to investment in a subsidiary. For example, assume that P company acquires all 5,000 shares of the common stock of S company for 10 per share and pays acquisition fees of 1,000. The entry to record the investment on P's company book is investment in, in S company is debit and cash is credit. The acquisition fees will be recorded in a separate entity as an expense. If P company acquires only 50% of the 5000 shares at 10 per share and paid an acquisition fees of 400, the entry should be investment in S company debit and 50% will be 2500 times the price of the share that is 10. So the investment is 25,000. And acquisition expense is debit and cash is credit for 400 riyals. If P company issues stock in the acquisition, the investment is recorded at the fair value of the stock issued, giving effect to and cost of registering the stock issue. Assume, for example, that P company issues 10,000 of its 10 par value common shares with a fair value of 13 per share for the 20,000 shares of S company and that registration cost amount to 5,000 paid in cash. The entries to record the investment on P company books are investment in S company is debit, there are 10,000 shares and the fair value is 13. Uh, so 10,000 times the par value that is 10 and 10,000 times 3 the fair the difference between the fair value and the face value of the common stock. If P company paid an additional uh, 6,000 as a finder's fees the entry would be professional fees, expense is debit, and cash is credit. Let us now talk about use of work papers in preparing the consolidated balance sheet. Affiliated companies prepare a full set of financial statements, balance sheet, or what we call as a statement of, pos of position, a statement of income or comprehensive income, a statement of cash flows, a statement of stockholders equity or retained earnings, and notes to the financial statements. On the date of acquisition, the most relevant statement is the consolidated balance sheet. The consolidated balance sheet reports the sum of the assets and liabilities of a parent and its subsidiaries as if they constituted a single company. Assets and liabilities are summed in their entirety regardless of whether the company, whether the parent owns 100% or a smaller controlling interest. The non-controlling interest are reflected as a component of owner's equity. Let us now talk about intercompany accounts to be eliminated. 
Since the parent and its subsidiaries are being treated as a single entity, eliminations must be made to cancel the effects of transactions among them. For example, intercompany receivables and payables must be eliminated to avoid double counting and to avoid giving the impression that the consolidated entity owes money to itself. Likewise, any intercompany profits in assets arising from subsequent transactions must be eliminated. Since an entity cannot profit on transactions with itself, a work paper is frequently used so to summarize the effects of the various additions, eliminations, and so forth. Some of the transactions that necessitate eliminating entries are going to be are given here. So this completes our discussion on an introduction to consolidated financial statements, date of acquisition. The process of combining the individual assets and liabilities of a parent company and its subsidiaries at the date of acquisition will be discussed in the next video. Remember, effective acquisitions Effective questioning brings insight, which fuels curiosity, which cultivates wisdom. If you have any question regarding this session, then please don't hesitate to ask in the comment box or by email and inshallah I will reply you back. Happy learning!